I'm Ray Kurzweil. I'm an inventor, author, and futurist, and I invite you to join me at Global Future 2045, which will be a fabulous Congress, to explore uh, the brilliant future ahead. Well, we're going to become increasingly non-biological to the point where the non-biological part predominates and the biological part is not that important anymore. So I began to collect data. I didn't think I would find anything, but uh, very surprisingly, I found that certain things are very predictable, and, and the, the predictable trajectory is exponential. And the things that this applies to are the fundamental measures of information technology. So technologies like health, all of health and medicine, which was not a, an information technology up until recently. Uh, yes, we use computers to track the information, but basically it was hit or miss. Uh, progressed linearly, and it was still pretty useful. Life expectancy was 37, 200 years ago. But at any rate, I had this graph. This is price performance of computing, the amount of computation you can get for the same cost, calculations uh, per second, per constant dollar. And this is a logarithmic scale, so every label level is 100,000 times greater than the level below it, so we're adding powers of 10. Uh, to what we're measuring. So this represents trillions fold increase even by 1981. Uh, and you know, people say, oh, it's Moore's Law. And a lot of people equate Moore's Law with, with this exponential growth, which I call the law of accelerating returns. Uh, Moore's Law is just one example of many of this phenomena. Moore's Law had actually only been underway for seven years when I did this. Uh, it has to do with shrinking the size of components on an integrated circuit. Uh, it was the fifth, not the first paradigm to bring exponential growth to computing, and it won't be the last. The sixth paradigm is already underway. If you speak to people like Justin Ratner, CTO of Intel, he'll show you the sixth paradigm already working in prototype form, self-organizing three-dimensional molecular circuits, and he predicts that'll take over in the teen years, well before it ran out of steam with the fifth paradigm, which is Moore's Law. But Look at how smooth a trajectory that is. It's really pretty remarkable. So people sometimes ask, well, gee, you know, if it's so inexorable, why don't we stop working so hard and we can all just sit and relax and kind of let it happen? Uh, and, then, and then it wouldn't happen. So what is predictable is human passion to create that next exponential leap. If we had radical life extension only, uh, we would get profoundly bored. We'd have a profound existential ennui, uh, running out of things to do and new ideas. Uh, but that's not what's going to happen. Uh, in addition to radical life extension, we're going to have radical life expansion. We're going to have millions of virtual environments to explore. We're going to ex literally expand our brains. Right now, we only have 300 million pattern recognizers organized in a grand hierarchy that we create ourselves in our neocortex. But we can make that 300 billion or 300 trillion. We can expand it. Uh, the last time we expanded it with the frontal cortex, we created language and art and science. Just think of the qualitative leaps that we can't even imagine today when we expand our neocortex again. We'll be thinking grander, deeper, more hierarchical thoughts than ever before, uh, creating whole new institutions like art and science that, that we could not articulate. Uh, so we're not going to get bored. If, if that weren't the case, then I think, you know, living for hundreds, thousands of years would, would be a profound uh, philosophical uh, nightmare. But uh, instead, we're headed for radical life expansion. In our new book, Transcend, Nine Steps to Living Well Forever, Dr. Grossman and I talk about three bridges to radical life extension. And bridge one, which is the bulk of the book, is a practical and personalized program of what you can do right now using today's moving frontier of knowledge to stay healthy. Until we get dramatic new technologies, which are not far off, that will make it a lot easier to stay young. And there's a lot more that you can do than people realize to forestall aging and disease processes. Now, aging is not one thing. Aging is actually a dozen different processes, and you can actually slow down each of these processes, and in some cases, actually stop or reverse them. In our new book, Transcend, Nine Steps to Living Well Forever, we describe this process of living long enough and staying in good health long enough 
to take full advantage of the oncoming breakthroughs in technology as passing over three bridges. Bridge one consists of the medicine we have today, while bridge two is biotechnology, and bridge three is nanotechnology and artificial intelligence. The two main pillars of bridge one therapies are prevention and early detection of disease. We'll also have non-biological bodies. We can create bodies with nanotechnology. We can create virtual bodies and virtual reality. That the virtual reality will be as realistic as real reality. The virtual bodies will be as detailed and convincing as real bodies. Um, we'll have different. We'll have different ways we can create bodies. We do need a body. Our intelligence is directed towards a body, but it doesn't have to be this frail biological body that's subject to all kinds of failure modes. Well, I think we'll have a choice of bodies. We'll certainly be routinely changing uh, our apparent body in virtual reality. So today you can have a different body in something like Second Life, but it's just a picture on the screen. Although uh, research has shown that people actually uh, begin to subjectively identify with their avatar. Uh, but in the future, it's not going to be a little picture in a virtual environment you're looking at. It'll feel like this is your body and you're in that environment and that your body is, is, some, is, is, a, is the virtual body and it can be as realistic as real reality and the environment can be as realistic as real reality. Five to ten years from now, search engines will actually be based on not just looking for combinations of words and links, but actually understanding, reading for understanding, the billions of pages on the web uh, and in books. So you'll be walking along and Google will pop up and say, now Mary, you, you expressed concern to me a month ago that your glutathione supplement wasn't getting past the blood-brain barrier. Well, new research just came out 13 seconds ago that shows a whole new approach to that and a new way to take glutathione. Let me summarize it for you. 20 years from now, we'll have nanobots, because another exponential trend is the shrinking of technology. They'll go into our brain, into the, through the capillaries, and basically connect our neocortex to uh, synthetic neocortex in the cloud, providing extension of our neocortex. Now, today, I mean, you have a computer in your phone, but if you need 10,000 computers for a few seconds to do a complex search, you can access that for a second or two in the cloud. In the 2030s, you need some extra neocortex, you'll be able to connect to that in the cloud directly from your brain. So I'm walking along and I say, oh, there's Chris Anderson. Oh, he's coming my way. I better think of something clever to say. I've got three seconds. My 300 million modules in my neocortex isn't going to cut it. I need a billion more. I'll be able to access that in the cloud. And our thinking then will be a hybrid of biological and non-biological thinking. But the non-biological portion is subject to my law of accelerating returns. It will grow exponentially. And remember what happened the last time we expanded our neocortex? That was two million years ago when we became humanoids and developed these large foreheads. Other primates have a slanted brow. They don't have the frontal cortex. But the frontal cortex is not really qualitatively different. It's a quantitative expansion of neocortex. But that additional quantity of thinking was the enabling factor for us to take a qualitative leap and invent language and art and science and technology and TED conferences. No other species has done that. And so over the next few decades, we're going to do it again. We're going to again expand our neocortex, only this time it won't be limited by a, you know, a fixed architecture of, of uh, enclosure. Uh, it'll be expanded without limit that additional quantity will again be the enabling factor for another qualitative leap in culture and technology.